So with me here today to talk about the uh, CAS report, the landmark report that was tabled in the UK in April of 2024, is our friend and columnist and author, Barbara Kay. Welcome, Barbara. Hello, David. Thank you for having me on today. Well, it's a pleasure, uh, Barbara. You have um, uh, incredible insights as you write columns in, in different publications, including the National Post, so I'm a great admirer um, of your work, uh, as you know, Barbara. And uh, you've written some very thoughtful uh, responses uh, to your analysis as you've read uh, the incredible report done by Dr. Hilary Cass, an esteemed pediatrician in the UK. Um, she chaired an independent review on gender identity, and uh, she's played many clinical roles. And that report, what, what, why is this report so significant for Canadians? Well, I think it's significant for all societies uh, in which gender, the gender affirmation model has become the norm. They, they just, it, it's, it's one of those meta reviews that is taken, undertaken with complete objectivity uh, that cannot be faulted for bad parameters or, you know, uh, faults in methodology or any of that. It was took four years to complete. There was an interim report in 2022 that presaged the uh, final conclusions that were going mm -hmm. to be, but we already knew uh, in 2022 uh, where, what, they, what conclusions they were beginning to draw. So um, it rightfully had a, a, a big impact and, and objective reviewers of the CAS review uh, were okay. We have to take this extremely seriously uh, mm -hmm. because it, it it actually ended in the um, JIDS clinic, as it was known, the Tavistock Gender Identity uh, Clinic, which was the centralized place where all uh, gender uh, confused children were referred to, being closed down, and uh, you know, uh, gender gender uh, treatment now being parceled out on a regional basis. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you close down a large agency like that, uh, it means that there were really serious deficits um, in the way that, that the treatment was going. And we do know there were whistleblowers uh, who prompted concern in higher, you know, it, throughout the National Health Service that something you know, needed well, to be done. I, I, so it, it, it's really a profound report, uh, mm -hmm. the CAS report, is that as you said, even closed down uh, these specialized centers for for gender transition, and and so we're going to go through the CAS report and and kind of where this what this means for Canadians and Canada, but I, I kind of wanted to back up for a second. That relates to Barbara. If you can help us understand how does the process work generally in Canada, where we have this so-called gender affirmation model. Because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's confusing. We hear about puberty blockers and we hear about hormones. We even hear about surgery where body parts are are, are um, uh, taken off or, or, or changed. I mean, how does this really work in practice, like from a kind of a, a simplified way? Well, in practice, uh, we only have to look back to the 1980s when um, the foremost uh, treatment center in Canada was at Cam H in Ontario, and it was run by Dr. Zucker. So he was extremely resistant to any rush to affirmation um, or belief in uh, the idea that a child of four or five or six could know with certainty what their permanent sense of their own gender was going to be. And that mm -hmm. was considered to be a responsible way. I consider it responsible today, and so do many people who have, you know, push back against the gender affir the gender affirmation model on the other hand is based in ide an ideology that wants to see gender as extremely fluid that wants to see sex as a biological sex not as immutable with inherent characteristics but as something that is fluid in itself and that subjective feelings of gender identity are as important or more important than one's biological sex and must therefore uh, be 
uh, treated with extreme deference, and that includes very young children. So the idea is that if you do not take very seriously uh, a child's, uh, when they tell you, I think I'm supposed to be a girl, if they're a boy or mm -hmm. vice versa, mm -hmm. that this would be very traumatic to them, that this, this is child abuse, uh, that it's as bad as conversion therapy for gay children or gay adults trying to convince them that they're not really gay, that they're, you know, and, and to try to get them to conform to heterosexual models. And as Dr. Cass would say, uh, to, you know, exploration is not conversion. Yeah. So the point is that these are um, complex cases yeah. where a child or youth presents themselves and says, hey, I'm confused about my gender. I think there may be a mismatch between my body and what I'm feeling inside. So this creates a lot of distress. And, and they are complex, as you said, Barb, because there's a lot of different variables involved here. And I think the CAS report gets to that. But the point is that in this context today, in 2024, um, as there has been children, certainly I, I'm familiar with, with some cases where a child will go to um, a specialist mm -hmm. and they will be put on puberty blockers. What do, yes. what do puberty blockers do then? Well, puberty blockers are, um, have been used in the past. They are medications that, that uh, actually suppress uh, your body's natural processing into puberty and the changes that come mm -hmm. with your body. They also affect development in the brain. Uh, but now there is a sense, children are given a sense of urgency. And mm. so they become, without knowing the side effects of puberty blockers, they're on board and their parents are on board for at the age of 9, 10, 11, 12, whenever some, some start quite early, um, starting in on these medications, which, which the therapists tell the parents are, this will buy us time mm -hmm. so that the child has a few more years to decide if they want to, you know, if continue or, but what the CAS review found was that 99, virtually almost 100% of, of cases of children starting with pu puberty blockers, they then go on to cross sex hormones. And this is for uh, girls taking testosterone and for boys taking estrogen, uh, basically to uh, for a boy to feminize his body, for a girl to masculinize her body, the voice, the, the broadening of the shoulders, the, the hair on the body. The... Mm -hmm. So once you're into cross-sex hormones, you've really uh, crossed into a territory it's very hard to come back from. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we've seen with detransitioners how they have said it's once your body is changed and, and and some of these are irreversible changes you know the voice mm -hmm. once it deepens you can't undeepen it even if so uh that's so puberty blockers basically uh, uh allow you to continue being pre-pubertal in your in your appearance mm -hmm. for a number of years and then of course um your peers have gone on without you there. They've now gone through puberty and you're in a kind of different place, um, a no man's land in a sense. Okay. So the, the gender affirmation model then is commonly used in a lot of countries, including in Canada. It mm -hmm. appears that once you have puberty blockers, it's a way to so-called buy time, as you say, so that you can come to grips with your gender, uh, you know, and try to get out of this, this, what must be an awful kind of sense of distress. Mm -hmm. And um, in that context, then you can move quickly to um, hormones and then ultimately uh, surgery. So the, I, I think that, you know, within that context, we had um, the CAS report was commissioned by the National Health Service in the United Kingdom. Um, the CAS report definitively called out, in, in effect, the, the, the medical fraud and, yeah. and experiments that were going on with the gender affirmation model. 
and proving that it is not evidence-based and that it's not serving those children. It's actually doing great harm. And so there's a lot of themes that I did want to go through with you um, briefly. And one is the the whole theme that uh, Cass believes that the children are not well served because a holistic model needs to be used. And I think you alluded to this, Barbara, that these children are being exceptionalized in the sense that they're being put aside outside of main um, uh, health care where normally there would be a team of professionals working with those complex cases, including psychologists, no less, that would look at the multiple variables involved in these cases. But instead, they've been um, kind of pushed off and bypassed through that kind of integrated system of healthcare, and instead put on waiting lists for gender services. And then that just creates more distress. So those children were not really being served. So is that a key theme that, that struck you as well, is the theme that we need holistic supports and health care for these cases? Yes. Uh, she, she said, um, uh, I liked her phrase where she said, exploration is not conversion. Because mm. the, the angle that these gender-affirming therapists take is if you're exploring, then you're not trusting the child and you're trying to convert them. Uh, this idea that you would try to convert a child to have a gender in conformity with their biological mm -hmm. sex is nonsense. And it speaks to the fragility of their own philosophy or their own theory that they're so nervous about mm -hmm. a child being treated holistically. I mean, we have a law in Canada, as you know, that therapists uh, may not uh, if a child presents with gender distress, they may not suggest to the child that there might be a possible other explanation other than the fact that they're in the wrong, you know, that they that, that, that gender is the answer to their, mm -hmm. uh, you know, changing their gender. Yeah. No, is, it's absurd. So what, what is that law again, uh, Barbara? Can you refresh six, our memories? Six, uh, the conversion therapy law. C14, it, I believe it is. Oh, is mm -hmm. it C14? Okay. Uh, so this is this is the law that was the entire government voted in favor of conservatives as well as liberals and uh, NDP and um, I was very sorry to see that you could be you could be subject to uh, violation of the criminal code according well, to that. So yeah. so what an incredible attack on really uh, evidence based um, healthcare practi yeah. uh, practice. Um, that should be based on, again, serving the whole person. Uh, so, for instance, if someone presents themselves as a child or a youth as confused about their gender, you need to look at a multiple set of variables. Without open discussion and debate, you're not thinking, nor are you free. Comment below. We'd love for you to join the conversation.